anyone interested in breathing, and who isn't, should be glad to learn that there is a third less smoke in Britain's air than there was 10 years ago. London's decrease has been a spectacular 60%, and as a result, the hours of winter sunshine have more than doubled. Sherlock Holmes wouldn't know the old place, hardly a pea super to be detected. The struggle for clean air has been a long one. In 1273, Edward I prohibited the use of coal in London, but in 1952, nearly 4,000 people died from London's smoke-foul air. 1956 saw the Clean Air Act passed, and improvement has been sensational. There's still a long way to go. Sulfur dioxide and petrol fumes remain major enemies. Cleaner air, cleaner clothes. Yet, paradoxically, the cleaning people are doing bigger business than ever. Take this man's suit. <sighs> Sorry, sir. It looked respectable enough, but a bath in perk or ethylene, perk for short, could tell a very different story. Ugh. And this amount of grit and dust might be found in a single suit. In Harrogate, the dyers and cleaners have their own research organization. Hardly a month passes without the introduction of a new man-made material, and every one of them is tested here to discover the best method of cleaning it. Many manufacturers send their products here for testing before going into production. Use of the wrong solvents can have pretty disastrous results. Most of these failures have been brought about deliberately for purposes of experiment, but it sometimes happens that a customer has a garment ruined at the cleaners. It may well end up here. The commonest cause of failure is incorrect labeling, but most good cleaners compensate their customers in full when an accident happens. Dry cleaning should prolong the life of materials, but it's necessary to know how they stand up to wear before and after cleaning. Hence this friction machine, simulating the rubbing and buffeting fabrics go through in day-to-day -day use. These are only a few of the many solvents now used for cleaning, and industrial chemists are continually inventing more. Yet dry cleaning, using chemicals to wash as against soap and water, is a comparatively recent discovery. In 1825, the housemaid of a French dye works owner upset a paraffin lamp over her master's best tablecloth. When it dried out, Monsieur Joly was amazed to see a clean area in the middle of what was obviously a rather dirty tablecloth. And that was the beginning of an industry which in Britain alone employs 50,000 people, cleaning up to a million garments every working day. Studies in the surface tensions of liquids and the water-resistant properties of materials are part of the effort to advance the already highly complex techniques of cleaning. Every Briton spends a pound a year on cleaning. It's a figure that keeps rising, but lags badly behind the American figure of six pounds per head per annum. There's been a big rise lately in the number of shops like this, who do the work on the premises, giving the customer a speedy and personal service. Modern machines that are programmed by punch cards have helped to make this possible. But a great deal of cleaning still goes to the works, where it's first sorted for weight, colour and degree of soiling. These machines, and others like them, are a big boost for Britain's exports. Over a quarter of the world's cleaning machinery is British made. Matched batches of garments are tumbled in solvent, which is kept pure by a process of continuous filtering and distillation. Once the dirt is out, the clothes are rinsed in clean solvent and then dried by tumbling in a stream of warm air. Temperature and humidities are scientifically planned to take the guesswork out of cleaning. No mere machine can match a woman's hand, though, when it comes to ironing.
The press is one article which no dry cleaner is without. It's now mechanized, but the basic shape and function has hardly altered over the years. The detailed work that pleated dresses and fine quality garments call for adds to the cost of cleaning, but is a skilled service that few women who care for clothes would want to be without. Treating leather is highly specialized work, and only people specially trained in the several skills required can do it. After solvent washing and drying, suede and sheepskin are sprayed with oil to revive the suppleness of the skin. Straightforward cleaning is one thing, stain removal another, and accidents will happen. When I first told this story, my fish was this big, then this big, and now, oh dear. motto for one young lady might be, look before you sit. When you're asked for a light, and you've only got two hands, and there isn't a table handy, anybody but an idiot would say no. He's managed it. And next morning, the dry cleaners are doing better business than ever. This girl has chosen to go to a coin-op, a relatively new development. Apart from a good quality cleaning job, the big advantage is swiftness and cheapness. The batches of garments have been cleaned and pressed, and now they swing along for inspection. The straightforward cleaning will have removed grit, dirt, grease, and most common stains, but the really troublesome ones will still be there. Another specialized job. Firstly, the stain has to be identified if the customer couldn't help, and then treat it with one of a variety of special chemicals. Cleaners advise that stains and spots should be treated with cold water only at the time of the accident. Sometimes a stain is irremovable because it's been combined with Granny's infallible recipe for removing it. A final burst of steam, and that just about cleans up the cleaning story. Oh, one thing we clean forgot. Here you are, sir. Your suit. <laughs>